Hey guys, it's time to continue our lightsaber build. Earlier this summer, we released a video showing off our attempt at building a power supply for our very own Proto Saber. That's right, a prototype lightsaber. It's a thing, look it up. Now, needless to say, it didn't go so well. In fact, even the fire department showed up. And if you wanna see that whole video, you can click on it right there. Anyways, that video was just about the power supply, but a bunch of you guys uh, had some ideas about what we were actually gonna do for the lightsaber, and a few of you actually got it right. Even fewer still looked at the description below the video and followed that link to see the complete circuit diagram and our plan for the lightsaber. You see, we were actually planning on using tungsten rod for the blade of the saber. Now, tungsten actually has a melting point of 3400 Celsius, or over 6000 Fahrenheit. That's really, really hot. In fact, if we could heat it up to just about 2000 Celsius, it would be able to melt through almost anything, including steel. So to test that out, we actually bought some tungsten from Torrey Hills Technologies on Amazon.com. Now tungsten's actually pretty pricey, so they gave us a 50% discount, which was awesome. If you guys want to get your own, there's a link in the description below. Anyway, we discovered a slight issue with using tungsten for the lightsaber blade. You see, when tungsten gets to around 1000 Celsius, it actually starts oxidizing, which means it starts smoking and small bits of metal actually start flaking off, which isn't really ideal for a lightsaber. Now that actually should have been pretty obvious because light bulbs are actually filled with an inert gas. Now hypothetically, to get around the oxidization problem, we could actually pipe in a noble gas like nitrogen over the entire blade while we're using it. But that would add a lot of complexity to the design and it's just a path we don't really want to go down. The other big issue with using tungsten is the power requirements. To heat this up red hot requires a few thousand amps at 24 volts. Now at 24 volts is perfectly safe, you're not going to electrocute yourself. I mean, you will burn yourself very badly. We've got a lot of work to do. Someone help me. I'm still alive, only I'm very badly burned. The issue here is to create a power supply that can switch high current is actually really expensive and difficult. After all, that's why uh, 911 got called on us last time. So we had to come up with a new plan. And a few of our fans actually suggested some really good ideas, especially one of our fans that we met in Michigan during the art prize. He researched another metal we could use called canthol. Now canthol is actually very similar to nitinol, which is used as a heating element, but it's stable up to 1400 Celsius, which is still hot enough to be able to cut through most things. The issue though, is you can't actually get canthol in rod form like this. You can actually only get it in wire form, at least that's all we were able to find and the thickest wire we could find was only 16 gauge, which is really thin. Now the tricky part with having a thinner wire is you actually need a much higher voltage to push that power through the wire. And to heat up the amount of wire we're gonna be using, we'll actually need around 300 volts DC. And 300 volts DC is a lethal amount of voltage. It's only gonna be running about 20 amps, so the total power draw is around six kilowatts, which is still pretty impressive. The nice thing is, we don't have a ground loop, so it would actually be quite a challenge to electrocute yourself from the Sabre. But keep in mind, this is a high voltage device and we have to be careful when we're using it. The other really nice thing about this design is it's a lot easier to switch a power supply at 300 volts and only 20 amps compared to a 24 volt, 3000 amp power supply. In fact, we can actually just do it with a single MOSFET, but more on that later. So without further ado, the new plan. We're gonna take a stainless steel rod just like this. We're gonna wrap it in ceramic insulation. And then, using our lathe, we're gonna wrap the canthal wire all the way around it. And it's actually gonna connect at the end to complete the circuit. Feed this with 300 volts at about 20 amps, and we'll have a yellow hot rod of destruction. Let me show you on a smaller scale. Since this is a shorter length of wire, we actually only need about 24 volts to get it going. Okay, so we plug this into the battery. Then you connect the other one like this. Whoa. And then we take these. Ooh. And we attach it like so. Give it a few seconds to heat up. Now obviously with a higher voltage, we can get heat up even faster. And as you can see, it's getting red. Shit. It's getting red. Shit. Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. Safety first. All right, let's try this again. And as you can see, it gets red hot super fast. Woo. Man, and the heat just coming off of this is crazy. Anyways, something like this is all well and good, but how are we gonna actually make it look like a real lightsaber? And sound like one too.
Well, our friends at Saber Experts hooked us up. This is actually an antique flash handle, the same kind used for lightsabers in the original Star Wars movies. So we're going to be using this as the hilt. Now remember, this is going to be a proto saber, which means we're going to have a cable going from this to the battery pack because we can't get enough power into the hilt of this, at least not with today's technology. Now, to make it sound like a lightsaber, we actually have a sound module from the lightsabers that saber experts make. And basically, it's actually got a small uh, IMU on it. So when you swing it around, it will actually make the saber sounds of you swinging around. So not only will our saber actually work and cut through things, it'll sound like one too. Anyway, enough talking about it, let's put it together. But before that, I want to tell you about this video's sponsor, Storyblocks. Now obviously, building prototypes of fictional things isn't cheap. And off YouTube ads alone, we can't support this kind of engineering. In fact, it's a miracle we've even gotten this far. Now Storyblocks is cool because it helps us with content production. It has stock images, vectors, icons, and more that you can use in your web projects, videos, or pretty much whatever you want. It has a growing library of over 400,000 assets. Once you download something from the library, it's yours to keep and use forever. In fact, we use Storyblocks to create an infographic for this very video. So if you want to help support the channel and ensure we can keep making awesome projects just like this one, check out the link in the description below to start your free 7-day trial of Storyblocks. Now, back to the build. All right, so the team's been hard at work and we have the first Proto Saber prototype <laughs> finished and we're about to turn it on for the very first time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are working with a bit of a higher voltage, which does mean there's a few safety concerns. So we have a few safety precautions here. We've got a CO2 fire extinguisher here right now. We've got a rip cord, which Dave is manning. And basically if he pulls this, it unplugs the battery and kills all the power. Um, if Ian starts to get electrocuted, Bogdan has a wooden pokey stick that he can poke Ian's dead body with and then we can get on with our day. So, <laughs> this is just a temporary battery box. It's actually off of our Batman Baja project. Uh, it's basically just holding all the batteries together. Later on, we will actually be building the Proto Saber Power Pack, which will actually be like a backpack holding all the um, batteries for you to use the Proto Saber. So, I think we're ready to turn it on. All I have to do, it's not on yet. All I have to do is plug in this red, red wire and we'll be live. Uh, one note, we're actually running this at 150 volts DC at the moment, which is technically still kind of safe, but if it goes well, we're gonna up it to 300 volts, which will get it even hotter, so. And if we need to, we can take it to 400. Up to 400 volts, so that'll be extra hot. Also, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, it's powered by AMD inside. 
All right, so that's just the sound effect module, which is pretty cool. <laughs> blaster. Yeah. And we also have the blaster sound effect. All right, so when Ian presses the big button, <coughs> it's going to turn on the actual saber. I'm just going to back up. Don't mind me. Ian is wearing highly insulated gloves, so uh, should be fine. And yep, we're getting some heat. Getting a bit smoky. Now, 150 volts DC might not be actually enough to get the metal uh, red or even yellow hot. So we'll give it another 30 seconds or so, and if it's not getting much hotter, we're gonna have to crank up the voltage. It smells good. Oh, we got, we got some red, it's getting orange right there. Man, I can feel the heat wave from over here. We, we might need to wear those silver volcano suits when we actually test this thing, <laughs> otherwise we might be getting a tan. All right, as you can see, the tip is getting orange hot, and it's actually gonna move along, and the whole thing should become orange hot. And then if there's enough power, it might even become yellow hot. I just, just eat it, wait. I, th I think we should crank power. Yeah? All right, we're gonna, we're gonna give it more power. There is six batteries in here now. We're going to add another six. And each of these batteries can put out, what, like almost 300 amps? All right, so we've doubled the batteries in the battery pack, and now we're talking about 300 volts DC, which should turn this red hot pretty quick, and subsequently yellow hot, and it'll be ready to burn through some things. All right, light her up. Ho ho! Oh yeah, and there we go. Down a little bit. That, that looks like a lightsaber. It looks, it looks like it's. I'm not pressing the button, but it seems like it's still on. Still drawing current. Alright. So, there appears to be a slight issue with the MOSFET and it's not turning itself off, so we're gonna just pull that wire. Nice big spark there. And now it's, it's cooling down. So, as you can see, we have a, a few issues to sort out. But in the next video, we're going to finish the battery pack and actually test this by cutting through a door. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you have notifications turned on because you are not going to want to miss this. All right. It's going to take a epic thumbnail shot for this. And I'm going to hopefully look cool while holding it, trying not to burn myself. Yeah, you hold it lower. A bit lower? Yeah. So yeah, like a sword. There we go. Oh, I can feel the heat in my face already. Uh, center the sword a bit more. There you go. Uh, just move only the sword. Yes, like that. And put your hands up a bit higher like this. But look forward. Kind of like, you know how they stand like this? In the game stuff. I'm getting a tan. Okay, now do another one. Okay, hold it like that again. The way you did in the beginning. A bit lower. There you go. Holy shit, this is hot. How about a... No, you won't be able to see that. Well. Okay, I think we have enough. Well, that's all for now. Make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on. You're not gonna wanna miss the next test. And if you guys haven't checked out our Make It Real series yet, check it out. We have over 40 projects just like this one. Mm -hmm. Same take or new take?